Cognitive Theories of Emotion What is an emotion? This question was asked by William James over a hundred years ago in his essay entitled Mind. The same question was also concerned amongst philosophers. Socrates was one of them. On his pursuit of reason, he coined the metaphor about master and slave, where the reason was firmly in control and the dangerous impulses of emotion were suppressed. Although the philosophy per se has been the history of development of reason, philosophers never neglected emotions. When Plato discussed Eros as the love of the good, he mentions that emotions were involved in reason as well. Aristotle had also his views about emotions way back in 384 BC, but he didn't spend too much time listing or analyzing them. He ended up presenting a list of emotions such as anger, fear, pity and like, concluding that they had opposites, but he never wrote anything about those opposites. In Roman times, Stoics were convinced that emotions were conceptual errors that would conduce someone into misery. They were the first ones to develop a cognitive theory nearly 2,000 years ago. The main study of emotions in the past was typically attached to ethics and was walking alongside Christianity that classified emotions, passions, and desires as sins. Descartes defined passions as perceptions, feelings, or emotions of the soul, and he went further by saying that emotions were disturbing passions. The remaining core of all philosophical theories of emotions is that all emotions preconditions cognitions, like the awareness of danger when in fear, the recognition of an offense when in anger, and appreciation of someone or something when in love. In psychology, emotion is defined as a complex state in which feelings will result in physical and psychological changes of thinking and behavior. There are three major theories of emotion, physiological, neurological, and cognitive. The naturalist Charles Darwin proposed that emotions exist so humans and animals can survive and reproduce, and those emotions would motivate people to respond quickly to stimuli, increasing chances of survival. Consider it one of the best theories, the James Lunge theory of emotion, the psychologist William James and physiologist Carl Lunge suggested that emotions are a result of physiological reactions to events. I believe that is just a more detailed work based on Darwin's evolutionary theory of emotion. Here, your emotional reaction is dependent on how you interpret your physical reactions. For example, let's say you are walking on the streets at night and a dog jumps right in front of you and it starts to bark. You begin to tremble. Your heart begins to race. So, according to this theory, you're not trembling because you're frightened. Instead, you feel frightened because you're trembling. The Scatcher Singer theory takes on board the physiological response to a stimuli that James Lunge theory talks about and suggests that the same physiological response can produce a different emotion that would depend on the situation and the cognitive interpretation that someone will use to label that emotion. For example, if you feel that your heart is racing and your palms are sweating during a hard exam, you will probably label this emotion as anxiety. But if you have the same physical response when you are in a date, you could interpret the same responses as love, affection, or arousal. What about if thinking must occur first before you experience an emotion? When a sequence of events causes a stimulus and makes you think, leading to simultaneous experience of physiological and emotional response? Well, the Lazarus theory of emotion just came into light to try explaining that. To understand what Lazarus tried to come up with, just imagine you encounter a tiger as you walk in the forest. You could begin to think that you are in danger. This would lead to an emotional experience of fear and then the physical reactions associated with the fight or flight response. Meaning, just run for your life. No argue about that. So, emotions impact our everyday decisions and how we see and interact with the world. But something that started to be written about 2000 years ago would not fit in just this small presentation. There's still a lot of questions about why we have emotions, 
and research will continue to explore what and how these feelings can affect us.